Welcome to Faith in Five, a weekly video devotional designed to discuss practical spiritual concepts in five minutes or less. I'm your host, Mark Vandella. I've decided lately that I'm going to go back and watch funny classic comedies. And so one of them that I stumbled upon the other day was Monty Python and the Quest for the Holy Grail. And as I watched that, I, I certainly wasn't looking for any kind of content or any uh, faith experience. But there's a moment in that movie where they come upon the bridge of death. And at the bridge of death, you're asked three questions. And if you get one of those three questions wrong, they tell you that you will be cast into the pit of eternal despair or something of that nature. And so as they get up, the, up to the bridge, there's an old man that asks them questions. And he starts with, what is your name? What is your quest? And I don't have a good accent or British accent, so I'm not going to do them all that way. But then he finishes with, what is your favorite color? And so the first guy goes through and says blue and moves through the, the deal. And the rest of them come running out and think, oh, this is easy. Second guy gets asked a nearly impossible third question and gets cast in the pit of despair. And then the third guy, he asks him what his favorite color is. And he says, blue, no. And he's about to say green. He gets cast into the pit of despair. And I tell you that as I sat there, I thought, you know what? This makes a ton of sense. See, people that come to me for any kind of career or life coaching are a lot of times asking the question, what am I created to do? What am I called to do? And how do I do so in a way that pleases God? And we approach that topic as if it's the bridge of death. We approach it as if we answer one of those questions right, the second question right. But if we miss on the third one, our whole lives are ruined. We're set on a path that is just, uh, it's just complete despair. And in my experience, and when I read the Bible and the story that God's telling, it doesn't work that way. Yes, there are people in the Bible, there are characters that have very clear, God speaks to them through a bush, through angels, through donkey. There are people that have a very clear message, a clear mission from God. But there are a whole lot of characters in the Bible and there are many more people now that do not hear it that clearly, that do not get it spelled out and are doing just fine. They're doing wonderful things for God and with God by their side. See, there is a story in 1 Chronicles chapter 28 where David is explaining to Solomon how to build the temple. And he's giving him very, very specific details. He's telling him about what to do, where, what materials to use. And it's, it's 18 different verses of all these different things to get it right. And as the story goes, it's almost as if you can sense that David sees Solomon's face like he's either got that glazed over look or his, his face is starting to sink as he's thinking, I don't think I can do this, that I'll remember all of that or that I'll do it perfectly or what if I screw it up? So after David lists all of these things in the way that he's supposed to do it, he finishes in 2830. He says, be strong and courageous. Just be willing to do the work. Don't worry about all this stuff. Don't be afraid or discouraged. Because God, the Lord, God, our God, your God, my God, will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He will actually go with you. He will be with you along this journey. And he will be sure that he sees this temple that you're building. He'll be sure that it gets done. So in our lives, as we're asking those questions, what does God want from us? I'm not sure there's a whole list of things that I feel like I need to do or I'm supposed to do in order to live this life correctly. Take David's encouragement to Solomon. Go and be encouraged. Be strong. Be crazy. Be willing to do the work. But just go out and start working and be sure that God will come alongside you. He will be sure that the work he has in store for us, the work that he wants you or me or us as a collaborative team to accomplish will be done because God won't leave us. In fact, he goes with us. It's not like a choose your own ending book where once you choose, you can't, you can't go back or you can't alter the course. God goes with us in this life. He wants our ambitions and our skill sets to align with his goal, his plan for his people. 
And so for us, we can take courage, take care, and take comfort in going with God because he will continue to move us, to nudge us, to bump us along that path that's the best course of action for us, that's fulfilling to us. And so for us, we can make decisions and go forward knowing that God is with us. God will not forsake you or leave you. Thanks for tuning in. If you want to follow us each week, click here to subscribe. And if you want to take it a little bit further, click here for discussion materials.